<sighs> hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? We're doing well. I'm great. Winded. Only 200 bulbs left to go. <laughs> For the record, it's January 3rd, so this goes way back. Yeah, a month behind, but it's fine. I was just planting bulbs, and look at look what I accidentally dug up. A little toad friend here. Little guy got really lucky that he didn't get hit with the bulb auger. I'm just, I'm going to replant him. I'm just going to put him back in here and he can hang out with the bulbs. I'm going to set him over here for right now. Get the bulbs in there and then <laughs> go ahead and I'll plant the toad. All right, toad friend. I think he was kind of wedged right underneath this alocasia bulb. So that's just where I'm going to put him right back into his little spot so he can keep on brumating. He can adjust his depth if he needs to. The soil here is very light. So he'll be able to dig through there just fine. <laughs> Poor toad. Put a little mulch there so I can remember that just in case I decide to come back over here and throw some more bulbs in the ground, don't dig right there. Anyways, this has nothing to do with what's going on this week. I don't know what's going on this week. I just started the video because I wanted to show everybody the toad. Probably doing stuff in the grow space. I don't know. Pick up in a few days. I'm still in the middle of working on last week's video. <laughs> What happened here? Seriously, what happened? Look at all these boxes. There's so much I have to get set up for recycling now. But I, I have to say, that's well worth it. Bulbs are planted up. It's been a few days getting things done. The forecast has taken a turn. And it is supposed to get very cold at the end of this week. Right around the time this video comes out. I think the low for that night is four degrees. Something like that. Four degrees... Fahrenheit. Going to be very chilly, which does change a lot of what I thought I would be doing this week. He's fun. I really like this guy. The knot's not... Wait, it's going the wrong way. Turn that around. Put it in like this. Will that work? Instead of the other way? Do you still want, still want to spend? It's not a good spot for it as it is. It's not going to be able to hang well enough. Maybe over here by the bananas. Oh, whatever. It's cute. I can tinkle. Not tinkle tinker with that later. There's a lot that I need to do in here in the grow space, but with a low of four degrees and it having been in the 40s and 50s for such a long time, that's a really drastic drop. So I'm going to be doing a lot more outside, I think, as far as some winter protection. I got more plants to bring. If it's going to be dropping below 10, then that means that the mule palms, the windmill palms, the rostrata yucca, and probably the recurvifolias, the gardenias, the oleanders, those all need to come in and they cannot come in until I put the Christmas stuff away. That all has to go up in the attic. I have it piled outside this door right now. There's a couple of reindeer hanging out over there. I'm going to get those brought in tonight, put into the attic. And then those things are all going to have to go in here by the end of the week. I have some heat cables that hopefully will be coming in the mail. That I want to wrap around the bamboo. There's going to be a lot going on. I probably don't need to preview it if I don't know for sure what's going on. Some of it depends on what actually shows up in the mail, but that's where we are. I'm glad I got to have some fun filming this video and playing with some really weird and unique planters, but uh, it's time to really get to work and get some major things done outside. Some important things, aren't we major? Just lots of little things. Ooh, I don't even know where to start. One, sorry the beginning of the video was so all over the place, but I wanted everybody to see the toad. That was over a week ago. And then the happy face planter, it just made me happy, so I wanted to share that. But it's not really relevant to what's actually going on this week. This week was just kind of a curveball as far as things are... Oh, I need to remember to take that shower in. I should have done that a long time ago. The cold. So the forecast was saying negative <laughs> 9 was going to be the absolute coldest. And I believe that was for Sunday evening. That was yesterday morning. Then last night it switched over to negative five. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Warming up. And now it's saying negative one on one of those cold nights and negative two on the other. Still very cold. Huge improvement over minus nine Fahrenheit. Minus nine Fahrenheit would be absolutely devastating to a lot of the plants out here. Even with all the protection that I'm going to try and get done here, it's still would be horrible, specifically for the laurel hedge. If y'all don't know, if you're new here, planted up a laurel hedge here about three, four years ago. And then that Arctic blast came through December of 2022, killed the hedge. So replanted the hedge. Maybe wasn't the smartest thing to do, but I have to have a hedge there. It's just too open. There's no privacy without that hedge there. And I managed to find laurels that were just a little bit bigger than the ones that were there when they died. It's rare that you can upgrade 
when like you lose a tree or a shrub and get something that's bigger and better than what you had before. So I was like, yeah, I got to do it. Downside to that being, <laughs> if we have these cold snaps where things are dropping below zero, then you, you might lose everything. But it's okay, I think. I planned ahead this time. You see all those little little sparkly things on there? I've wrapped them in some C9 lights. That's what those are over there. 25 clear incandescent C9 lights, not LED. They have to be incandescent bulbs. They put off a lot of heat. Each one of those strands is 175 watts. They're powerful. Tried to concentrate most of the bulbs to the lower half because that's where most of the wood is, the, like the thick wood that want to make sure it survives the winter. I would prefer the foliage and everything survives, but worst case scenario, the foliage dies back but regrows from the wood, right? That's what want to happen. I also, just to be safe, I figured why not double down? A few months ago, ordered a whole bunch of plant covers. These are 94 by 78. That should be big enough to get one on top of each one of those laurels down there. I'm hoping. There's five here. I thought I had ten of them because I was going to double up on them, but apparently I just did the five. These are pretty thick. They had good reviews, and the main thing is just keeping those really extreme drying winds off of them because when it gets cold, it also, at least here, very, very windy. That's what tends to do the damage to the foliage. So that's the plan for the laurel hedge. I also put down a fresh layer of mulch when I was done planting the bulbs. The front of this berm down here where those laurels are is full of tulips and daffodils didn't go probably as deep as I should have with the tulips, but the auger just kept choking up on roots and pipes. There's a lot of plumbing that runs through there, which I talk about anytime I try and plant stuff in that area. That's okay. If you can't plant bulbs very deep, you just need to put some extra mulch on top. So I threw about a three inch layer of mulch across the entire berm, which I was going to do anyways, but I figured that way. That saves me a couple of inches from having to go down further with those bulbs. There's no more mulch and I would like to have mulch up higher around the bases of those laurels. I tried to make sure it was piled nice and high, but uh, th there just wasn't enough. I only had, I think, 60 bags, and I know that sounds like a lot, but I had to pile it very high around things like the bananas. There's just giant clumps of, you can't see it, but just trust me, there's big piles of mulch around other things and the needle palms and whatnot. So tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon probably, well, maybe I need to do it today. I have to look at, hold on, I gotta look at the forecast again. It's <laughs> looking like it's going to rain and snow all day tomorrow, and that's the last day I have to work on this because the video's gotta come out, and uh, then the cold's gonna roll in, so... Turns out I thought I had a couple days to split this up, but it looks like I need to do just about everything today. So, less talking, more doing. I have a bag for each one of the laurels. What I was saying is I may have to sacrifice the mulch for the bulbs and use a rake and pull it all up from the front of the berm up to around the bases of those laurels. It's, it's their first winter. They've never had a winter in the ground before, so I think that that would probably be the smart thing to do. Might mean that that kills off those tulip bulbs. The daffodils will be fine, but there's like 400 tulip bulbs in the front of this berm, which, you know, honestly, don't know how that was going to work out anyways, because the bulbs that I planted there are mid to late tulips, and by mid to late spring, that berm is full of the Pedicich japonicus, so I wasn't really thinking there anyways. That was going to look ridiculous as it is, so maybe this is, this is probably the best thing to do. Those bulbs will probably be fine anyways. I can always redistribute that mulch when I'm done. So I'm going to cover those up, and then I need to remember, need to cover the fountain. I have a tarp out here. I drained that down last night, so I need to get that covered up. And then plants. Plants need to go inside. That's going to be the last thing that I do. So the windmill palm... Mule palms. I have two of those out here. There's two windmill palms, a couple on the front porch, the yuccas, potted bulbs, minus two. That's too cold. So I'm going to take those inside. I think I'm even going to take in the hollies because they're potted and that's going to be pretty freaking cold for them. And the Japanese maples that are out here as well. I also have some hydrangeas left over that didn't get planted. The, I should probably take those inside too. And by inside, I mean into the garage. So the plan of action there, I'm only explaining this because I don't know if I'll be able to film it because there's just, there's so many <laughs> things happening right now that are really important to get done, right? They're not things where I can like try and spend a long time filming things. I need to just say what's going on. I'm going to try and get it done and then we'll see what gets done. I'm thinking since there's going to be a lot of perennials going into the garage, I'm going to probably drop the temperature in there. Right now it's the heater set at 77 I'm going to drop that down to like, I think the lowest it goes is 60. 
the reason that I want to do that is because for plants like the Japanese maples and those bulbs and even the hollies and the windmill palms, taking them from uh, where it's been in the steady, I'd say low 40s and upper 20s at night, that's about what it's been like out here this year since October, generally been in the 40s. Well, actually, we've had lots of days in the 60s, but you get it. It hasn't been horribly cold. It's been very mild, upper 20s, lower 40s. I'm going to say that's probably the average, somewhere in there. That's a huge change to then throw them into the growth space where it's in the upper 70s and very humid. And I think that that had a lot to do with the crown rot that I had to deal with on <laughs> the windmill palms and the mule palms last year was taking them inside when it would drop below like 15, 20 degrees. That's when I would bring them inside. Move into the really warm, humid environment from being really cold and moving them in and out. I think that that was a problem for them. So... For their sake, and the sake of the Japanese maples, because I have two, three out here that are potted up, I guess the hollies too. They would probably be fine. And the bulbs, I just don't want to expose them to the extreme heat. So that's a, such a risky thing to do, though, because what if there's like a power outage? I'd rather it be in the 70s or 80s in the garage <laughs> when it's in the negatives outside so that there's more of more wiggle room should the power go out. But I don't know why the power would go out. We're not expecting, like, big ice storms. There's supposed to rain for a few hours tomorrow morning and then turn to snow and then maybe some more snow over the weekend. I really hope for snow because snow is a great insulator. And that could be a saving grace for that hedge down there. And for some of the palms. Because I still have to cover up the all the sables and I need to go up in the attic and find some more lights. I have three boxes left of these lights. And those are going on these needle palms over here and I have some bags that I'll put over those. So that's everything the user staying out they're good to zone for it they should be fine yeah okay so there it is oh the other thing oh, i don't do we want to talk about this the bamboo planters i haven't moved these i want to say ever but i know that i've moved them at least once before because the patio was restained several years ago so i had to have moved them those pots are extremely heavy those blue pots that's why i don't move them that's why i put perennials in them, right? Because it's not something I want to move in and out of the house when it's going from warm to cold. But the bamboo would probably benefit from not being out here when it's that cold. I had devised a plan for those containers this year, which involved these really, uh, it's an ugly color on these bags, but they're just the zip-up bags. Tall, I think it says 95 inches high, 79 inches wide. I have heat cable coming in the mail. It's not here yet. It was supposed to be here a few days ago. That was going to wrap around the containers. And then some of the insulative foil, that, you know, the bubble foil insulation wrap. That I was going to put around the containers with about a one inch gap between the foil and the pots, with the pots being wrapped in that heat cable, I'm putting the bags over the entire thing. It would just add a few degrees of protection. That's generally all I think I would need for them. But that was with the assumption that chances are it wouldn't drop below zero. Because it doesn't drop below zero here that often, but we're moving on to this becoming an every year thing here for the last few years. So maybe that's changed. So I may end up moving those bamboo planters inside too. I don't want to do that because they are very heavy. Like I said, and not easy to move. It might be smarter just to try and get them in, just to get them into the garage instead of dealing with this. Not to mention that that heat, tape that's going around the containers it's not going to be here until tomorrow and it's supposed to be raining and snowing all day tomorrow that's why i was saying i think i have to get everything done today and not split up between today and tomorrow even though it's like in the 40s today it's absolutely beautiful and i feel weird it seems stupid to wrap those shrubs up in blankets when it's in the 40s outside but that's not gonna be the case in a couple days right so i'm going to just cut it off here and pick up when i've hopefully gotten an awful lot done Huh. I don't think that looks half bad. I like those bags. I haven't used them before. They tightened up really well. Hopefully tighten up. I may take some bungee cord and wrap that around the bases just to really hold it in there. I may take some more frost cloth and just bundle it around the bottoms of those, but so I, I think it's pretty good. It doesn't look half bad either. I'm not minding it. Everything out here is done. I've got the plants. <laughs> you can maybe see through the hydrangea tree, palms and everything else lined up, ready to go inside. The forecast has warmed some, so now instead of negative five, they're saying negative two is going to be the coldest of those, like, three to five chilly days. Really, the needle palms, that's what's underneath these things right here. The needle palms, they could handle negative two. But just to be safe, went ahead, bundled them up anyways, have some sandbags in there to hold them down, and some lights on the inside, just 
in case. Keep things nice and toasty. The There's a sable mine. I'm not going to fix it. Also, I broke this thing. I don't remember what it's called, but I broke it. Coach hook? Hensman's hook? Hensman hook? What is it? Shepherd's hook. Shepherd's hook. Yeah, that's broken. I could maybe double up the bags on these two sable miners right here. Mm, I have to think about it. I have to wait and see how many bags I have left because I do still have these over here. Just one, two, three, four. Now, if you may remember last year during that Arctic blast, they got totally destroyed. So everything you're seeing on them is new growth, and I would like to preserve that as much as possible. This is all I have left as far as lights go. So some C9s here and some extremely old, really, really old C7s. I actually really prefer the C7s. I should have mentioned that when I was talking about these C9 lights. C7s, just from my experience, better when it comes to protecting the plants because the C9s can get so warm that they'll scorch the foliage sometimes. And the C7s tend to be closer together, so you just get a better overall wrap with them. And also like, heat cables and those things work <laughs> even better, but... I use these because they're made to be wrapped around plants and this is a, you know, it's a huge, unless somebody tells me that, never mind. I was raised by a lawyer, I was going to go into liability talk, but we don't need to do that right now. It's not important. That's it. I just need to wrap these up and then all of these are ready to go into the garage, which I don't necessarily need to do tonight. It is supposed to be cooler tomorrow. It's like 52 right now and the birds are chirping. It feels like March. It's so weird that it's going to be negative two in a couple of days, but that's... It's winter. That's what we do in winter time. I mentioned that because the low tomorrow night is 17. So really, these don't need to come in until Saturday because the real cold rolls in on Saturday and everything that's over here can handle 17. But, you know, maybe I'll just do it to get out of the way. I don't know. We'll see. And I don't... I could put lights on these. I just really don't think I need to. This corner is pretty warm and it, it just... They keep predicting it to get more and more mild. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I need to. Two minutes later, I went in and put the lights in there just to be safe. What if the forecast is wrong and it goes back to being really cold again? May as well have the lights there just to be safe. <laughs> he said really cold as if negative two isn't really cold. It's just an improvement from negative nine. The bamboo <laughs> over here. It turns out that I have an extra bag. I thought I only had three, but I have an extra, which means that I could double bag those, which is what I'm probably going to end up doing. Because again, minus two, I'm not as worried about that. Just huge difference between minus two, minus five, minus nine. Every degree below zero makes a difference, but if they're predicting minus two, that could mean that it's going to get a little bit colder than that, or it might mean that it's not even going to get below zero. There's just no way to know. For these planters right here, it's just too risky moving them. They're too big, too expensive, too, not fragile, but uh, I just, I don't, I don't want to risk breaking them. I would be really upset if I broke those. Much more upset if those got broken than I would be if the bamboo died. So that's where my reasoning comes down to and why I figure I'll just double back those on Saturday because by Saturday the heat cables will be here. I'm going to wrap those in heat cables. And we I think we already talked about that, right? Look at this guy. Look at that. Isn't that freaking beautiful? Or just sunset. Way more pink in person than how that's looking on the screen. Oh, it's so pretty. Alright, last plant. Once that Japanese maple's in, I'm done. At least for tonight. I'll still handle those bamboo things probably on Saturday. I don't know, we'll see. Ah, look at that. Like a glove. Perfect fit. <laughs> Could not fit anything else in here. Went with the plants that are going to stay in here the longest. Towards, you know, the furthest away from the door. Because, so, you know, gotta work your way forward. Mule palms, they probably won't be coming back out until March. When mill palms maybe February. I'll just have to wait and watch the weather and see what goes on there. And then plants that I want to make sure get a bit of a draft and stay cool. Japanese maples, boxwoods, and then there's there's some shrubbery that's tucked way back in there. Some uh, copper top, copper top viburnums. All plants that will be going back outside probably the end of next week. I don't know once temperatures looks like they're going to stay above 10. These will all go back out. The boxwoods would probably be fine, but just to be safe, they're in a container. They're going to be more susceptible to dying from extreme cold. Same thing with these two Japanese maples. Figured, bring them in. Why not? Everything else, might as well cover all the bases and keep them safe. <sighs> last minute change. It's getting dark. This has got to be the last thing I do out here. An inset Morelli I hear that I thought that this was toast, but I was looking at it, peeled back some of its dead skin and still firm. Sucks the shovel under there, pulled it up. 
and then toss it in the garage. Uh, didn't get the shot, but you get it. I dug up a, well, it's dark. It's there, it's a banana. Still has some life in it. It's gonna need some work done to it, but that's not, I don't know, that's not what I'm worried about right now. I'm worried about anything right now, actually. All the plants are inside, things are protected. There's nothing to be worried about. You know, it actually is pretty nice in here. You would never know that outside of this thing, it's 44, 42, with 35 to 40 mile an hour gusts of wind. I am freezing my freaking butt off. It's supposed to drop into the teens in just a few hours. It's a flash freeze. That's always fun. I was going to skip this because the forecast keeps changing and keeps getting better ish. I'm mean, still going to be very cold, but they're saying it may not even drop below zero now if it does only by a couple degrees. But I already had the bag, so I figured I should go ahead and do this. The heat cable finally came in the mail. I got it kind of wrapped around the pottery, not as well as it should be, but I <laughs> can't feel my hands. And everything's wet because it just started to rain. I figured I should pick up and talk about what's happening at least. I'm going to double bag them just because I have the extra bags. Had I been thinking, I would have put the green one because I have three of these whatever this color it's an awful color i hate this color just looks like old sweaty white why would you do that i should have put the green on one the white on the other then put these on top of it it doesn't matter one of them's not gonna match that's all that's all i was saying okay i think we're good to go everything's in it's pretty breezy those bags haven't moved basically at all threw a couple extra sandbags on these because the wind's moving them off there's this did this come off already? No, that one's so good. In a couple of hours, everything's going to be covered in ice. So it was really important to get these things covered up. See what I meant? They don't match. So I should have started with the green one and put the sweat stain color one on top of it, but it's, it doesn't matter. It's not that important. Then perennials, hollies, hydrangeas, anything that hadn't been planted yet. Those are under there. It's still open on one side. The whole point of this is just to keep the ice off of everything. It doesn't have to be warm in there. It's just... A little extra protection, that's all. Hopefully rocks and bricks will be enough to hold that down. Fountain's covered. I wish I had some more bungee cords or something, so I just really feel like the wind's gonna take this thing off of here, but I'm out of rope, I'm out of bungee. I'm just gonna have to keep an eye on it and hope for the best. Whew. Oh, heat, oh, it feels so good in here. Got the Restrada in, little wags. Now I just need to get these things set up. I have several of these around, They've all gotten kind of old. They're not working very well. These are just Wi-Fi thermometer hygrometers so you can get your temperature. I keep wanting to say pH. Temperature and humidity with these. And uh, it's just out of sheer curiosity, I want to get one put inside one of those bamboos out there and set one on the outside of it. And then the same thing with the laurels. Put one on the inside and set one on the outside. Be able to get a comparison between everything and we can talk next week about how this all worked. Oh, hey, Pumpkin. Hey, Pumpkin, how you doing? Did you come over and say hi? Where are you going? You got somewhere to go? Got some peace and quiet around here. The kitchen's sleeping, isn't she? That's nice when the kitchen sleeps. You get to run around and do your own thing without being followed. I don't expect much from some frost cloth and some heat cable, but I'm just curious. The whole reason I'm even doing this with those bamboo planters, I know that this is not a very professional way to film, but it's cold and it's raining and the I, saw, I need to go back out there and clean off the table still. I'm curious to see how well uh, these insulate. The yellow bamboo, really common. Good into zone six, technically a zone seven is what they're saying now, even though I've spent the last few days preparing for temperatures that are gonna be below zero. They do their best with a more mild winter. You get a lot more growth out of them in the spring and early summer gets nice bigger canes. Last winter, December of 2022 and that Arctic blast came through, it really did some damage to those. So I just thought it would maybe be fun to wrap some heat cable around the bottom of the pots, cover them up for when it's going to be below, say, like 10 degrees, which is generous, I think, because they can go well below 10. They can, you know, probably go down to about minus 5, minus 10, but they're in a container and that really affects big time their cold hardiness. They're more exposed. So this is going to help make up for some of that exposure. Maybe it's just going to be breaking even with what they'd be dealing with were they in the ground. I don't know. But I'm curious to see how well this works because if it is really effective, if I'm seeing good temperatures in there, then I may try for a different bamboo. There are a lot that I'd like to grow that are not hardy here and like if it's only a difference of maybe five to ten degrees. That's doable. There are a lot of things you can do to add just five to 10 degrees. Well, actually 10 degrees is, uh, that's a big ask, but five degrees, very doable. 10 degrees, 
really got to step up what you're doing protection wise with things to get to that point i'm happy with everything got done this week it uh, took a long time it was tedious work not labor intensive it was just tedious a lot of things i'd iron out in my head for what i wanted to do normally these are things i have to do in like i have october and november i'm pretty happy didn't have to do this until this time of year until basically mid-january I don't know if I've ever left the Mule Palms and Windmill Palms out this long before. Generally, they're in for probably a month to a month and a half each winter, something like that. We have more mild winters, but I've never had them out this far. Like At some point, I usually would have had to move them in for at least a weekend, and then I could move them back out. Uh, this is That's been nice. I, did, I had to prune them to get them in here, but it's fine. They needed a prune anyways. It turned out that I cannot lower the temperature on the heater, and by turned out, it means I remembered there are tropical fish in there. So I really can't drop the temperature. So I'm just going to have to stay on top of the fungicides and all those things, airflow. Make sure not get water in their crowns. They might get pissed off and stressed out from being sent from mildly cool temperatures into this warm, humid environment. That was the other reason I wanted to get this done before the cold rush did. Much more pleasant moving things in yesterday when it was like 48, 51, somewhere in there. Very mild, pleasant temperatures as opposed to had I waited until today to do it, they'd be going from, I guess it's actually like 39 right now. The temperature's going down. It's supposed to be below freezing here in just an hour or two, but it's so windy and rainy and that wind chill is intense right now. That would have been much more of a shock to them. So maybe it won't be as much of a shock. I dropped the temperature to 74. I think that's about as low as I should go and I have to keep a close eye on the water temperature in there because I don't, I don't want to hurt the fish. The living thing comes well before the palm tree things. I know palm trees are living. You know what I mean? The sentient thing comes before the plant thing. That's what I meant to say. My head's cold. <laughs> My whole body's cold. I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm looking forward to having those sensors set up and having a look at what the protection did for the plants outside and being able to share that with everybody. And I'm actually, it's not, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to the cold or that I'm happy that it's getting cold. I enjoy the snow. I think it's pretty. I'm much more motivated to work with the house plants and spend more time here in this growth space when it's really cold outside. It's been in the 40s, 50s, and 60s for the last few months. It's been so mild that I haven't been motivated to do much in here because I've still been outside. Heck, at the beginning of the video, I was planting bulbs. That was a week and a half ago, but still getting things done and popping shrubs in the ground. The ground isn't even frozen. The ground temperature right now is like 42 or maybe it was 36 last time I checked. I don't really remember, but it's going down. We're about to the freezing point. It's time to stop with the planting and just chill until March and work with the house plants and be enjoying it a lot more when I'm in here doing those things and not feeling like I must be outside doing things outside because it's nice. It's okay to hang out outside when it's freezing and cold out. And some fun activities planned, hopefully. I placed a big plant order today from Hertz that wasn't advertising 50% off, but I put some things in my cart went to check out and there was a discount that added up to 50% off of my total. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna keep throwing some things in there. And long story short, there's like two dozen plants coming in, but it's mostly little terrarium things, but there are a few larger ones that I'm more excited about. And uh, those will be here in, I don't know, a week or two. Expedited shipping was the same as regular shipping, which it should have been. Shipping was expensive. That's what everybody does, right? When you see a forecast where you're gonna be in single digit temperatures, maybe below zero, order plan. Nothing risky about doing it that way. Now, I added a heat pack and it's expedited and chances are since it's Friday, it won't ship out until next week and the cold will hopefully be more moved out by that. And we can talk about all that when those plants come in. I'm gonna go, need to warm up, clean up, get this video edited and uh, just hopefully enjoy some snow. If it snows, it's going to be really spotty. But yeah, I'm glad to have all the plants protected outside and feel more secure at that. I'm going to try and find something to wrap those pots up with to protect them from the wind or so the wind doesn't blow them up. You know what I mean. Hey, comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on with your plants? I know a lot of you are experiencing this extreme weather right now. Pretty much everybody in the south and Midwest have that front that's spiraling through. There are probably a lot of other people doing the same thing that I'm doing or further down south who are just Hoping that they don't get tornadoes or get washed away because things are looking pretty bad down there too. But hopefully they haven't been too bad. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.